Hello and welcome back to Lesson 2.6. And we're actually going back to where we started in Lesson 2.1 because remember this thing? We looked at this and we talked about basically radiuses and how they're the same. And we could say things like segment CN is congruent to segment uh, AN. because they're both radii of the circles. Um, but we were trying to get to CB and AB. They're not radiuses of any circles. So how could we prove that they're the same? Well, we could use CP, CTC. You know? If we could prove that they're part of a triangle that is congruent to, it, to each other, then we could say that uh, they're part of a that they're congruent. If they're part of a triangle that's congruent, sorry, that if they're part of two triangles that are congruent to each other, then they must be congruent, CB and AB. Okay, so can we prove that they're part of two triangles that are congruent? Well, they're part of these cool right triangles, but we don't know they're right triangles because we don't know if that's actually a right angle or if it just looks like a right angle. Hmm. We do know side, side, we don't know any angles, though. That's irritating. But if we actually leave that right-looking triangle and do this arrow-looking triangle, we actually know that this is a radius of the small circle. So we can say that CM is congruent to AM, and MN is congruent to MN. <laughs> uh, and so that's give it, that's a shared side or reflexive. These are basically given. These are radii of same circle, which that is given. Uh, given to us. It's actually, it's not given to us here, but it says at the very beginning of the book, M and N are at the center of their respective circles. So that is what allows us to say that they're, that these seg these segments are radii and then therefore they are congruent. So in, uh, I've said this a couple of times, but I love saying it, in geometry, you're given some information, and then you take that information and you prove other inf you prove things. You take it further. Um, in the real world, you would go measure something, or you would make a circle with a laser ring, or you know you would get some information, but then you'd be able to take it further, just like we practice in class. Okay, so now we have side 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 for these two triangles, these arrowy ones. Okay, so therefore they are the same. So I'll call one triangle triangle CNA. Nope, that's not right. CNM. ANM. And don't take my word for it. Do we actually know that this these two are congruent by side side side? Well, uh, CN and AN. CM and AM and just think of a different one and uh, reflexive. So there it is, side 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 on that. Boom, boom, boom. And now we know these are congruent. We know these two angles are congruent to each other, which means we actually know that these angles on the other side are congruent to each other because straight lines have to add up to 180. So 180 minus that equals that, and 180 minus that same thing equals that same thing. So these little angles enhance. Man, this is why I like my other one better. This looks blurry. So 
So because we've proven these two triangles are congruent, we know this angle is, must be congruent to this angle by CTCTC. And then therefore, because this is a straight line, the, one thing you can trust from diagrams is that straight lines are straight. Um, straight lines are straight and lines that cross do cross. Other than that, you can't trust anything from a diagram except the markings. Okay, so because this is a straight line, and straight lines always have 180, this angle in here has to be congruent to this angle in here. And because we already know this side is the same, and we have a, and we have a shared side here, now we have side, angle, side, that these two triangles are the same. So we know that triangle C and B, cosmic radio background, Cosmic microwave background, there it is. It's unrelated. Just brought that, okay. A and B, triangle A and B. By side, angle, side. And therefore, finally, A, B, C, B, are they congruent? A, B, C, B. Well, they're corresponding parts of congruent triangles, and corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. So yes, A, B, segment A, B is congruent to segment C, B. Whew, that was exciting. Oh, I broke my pencil. So we're justifying construction strategies. How can we explain why particular constructions work? 